Jelly. Jealous, huh? Well, yeah, but how come some guys have all the luck? It's not luck. God made everybody, and we're all special to him. Hey, everybody at home, join us in singing this song. Okay. Everybody at home is singing along with us. And Erin, smile! Cheer up! Good. You're special, and God sure did a neat thing when he made you. Thanks, Egbert. That's the nicest thing anybody ever said to me. Benz! Benz! You're sure getting into this book, aren't you? Oh, uh-huh. Hey, sir. Hi, dear. Oh. Got a minute? Sure do. What could I help you with today? Dirk, have you ever been jealous? Many times. You? How'd you get over it? Well, I'm not going to tell you all that. But I do want you to read this book. I think it'll help. I'll just leave it on the desk when you're through, if I'm not back before you leave. Okay, Dirk. Where are you going? i got to go and read the meters. Bye now. Bye, okay. Vince. See you later. Huh. I hope this works. You want to hear it, Vince? Ha <laughs> ha. Looks like a good story. Jealousy is one of those feelings that's really quite hard to explain. Maybe you've never been jealous of anyone. But just wait. One of these days you'll meet up with someone who's a little smarter, a little more popular, or maybe more athletic than you are. And if suddenly a surge of jealousy wells up inside you, then you will understand what this story is all about. Once there was a young cowboy who was raised in a ranching community. His name was Kirk Manchester, and he was the envy of everyone. Isn't he wonderful? He's the best driver in the West. Aw, uh, he's nothing. I see lots better. Aw, uh, you're just saying that because you're jealous of him. Women. <laughs> Harold was jealous of Kirk. Most of the guys were. He was handsome, strong, athletic, and women folks stuck to him like bees stick to honey. How come the girls go for him? What's she got? She's not that good looking. She sure is. I've seen better. Yeah, he's not. And you're jealous. I am not. I know I'm not. I think you might be, Harold. What? Me? Well, maybe just a little. Oh, rats, what am I supposed to do? That's the hard thing about jealousy. When you've got it, how do you get rid of it? That's what I just asked you. Sheesh. <laughs> what am I going to do about this? i got to get rid of this feeling. Kirk 
was never jealous of anyone. He had no reason to be. He was the handsomest, best-dressed cowboy in the West. Hi. How do you, Mary Lou? I'm fine. Oh, Kirk, you look so handsome today. What a beautiful shirt. Heck, it's just a ray. I guess I am pretty handsome, aren't I? Mary Lou, doesn't he look great? Not as handsome as the cowboy I just saw coming up the road. Well, what are you talking about? What What's going on here? And Gerda rushed Mary Lou off to see the handsome stranger. Kirk just stood there in shock and anger as a strange, new, and horrible feeling welled up inside of him. Kirk was jealous. Gerda had set the ranch on fire with the news of the handsome stranger, and men and women folk alike were rushing out to catch sight of him. He's the most handsome man I've ever seen, and strong, too. You should see his muscles. Yeah. That guy better be worth it. What's wrong, Kerr? Oh, some creep is coming that the girls want to fall over. They're just make them fools of themselves. Oh, I saw him. Good-looking dude. Hey, you're not jealous, are you, Kerr? Who, me? Don't be crazy. Why would I be jealous of anyone? Only you can answer that, Kirk. Everybody's a shrink. Let me out of here. Whatever you say. Hey, here he comes now. Whoa. Oh, welcome to our ranch. Thank you. My name's Bert Barrett. The Bert Barrett from the Barrett Spread? Yeah, that's me. Oh, pardon me for being so foreign, but are you married? Not yet. Reckon I haven't met the right lady yet. Oh, you will. What's the matter with those fool women? Isn't he handsome? He's so strong. This is making me sick. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I hate this feeling. I've never been jealous of anyone. How do I get rid of it? I've never been jealous. Just then, Harold came along. I feel so much better. I'm free of it. I'm not jealous anymore. Yippee! Oh, hi, Kurt. Why so sad? Did I just hear you say you got free from jealousy? How'd you do it? How'd you get rid of it? It's funny you should ask me that, Kirk. You're the one I was jealous of. Every time I'd look at you, I'd be jealous, but not anymore. Well, what happened? Well, I read here in the good book that love is not jealous, but I was jealous, so I knew I didn't have any love, so I asked God to give me love, but he told me that I had to first give him my jealousy, so I thought that was a fair enough swap. So what happened? I gave him my jealousy, and he gave me his love. And what happened then? Oh, all of a sudden, I was free. That awful feeling I had left. And now when I look at you, I don't feel jealous. I just think, didn't God do a neat thing when he made you? Thanks, Harold. That's the finest thing anybody ever said to me. You've really helped me. It's okay, Kirk. See you later. Kirk sat there and thought for a while. It almost seemed like the jealousy was too strong to get rid of. But when he finally gave it over to God, God gave him his love. And do you know what happened? Bert Barrett and Kirk Manchester became best friends. Let's ride up to the East Range and round up the cattle. Okay, Bert, Bert, God sure did a neat thing when he made you. Thanks, Kirk. That's the finest thing anyone ever said to me. Me too. Let's go do the roundup. <laughs> well, I guess I better go now. Oh, um, it's a big paper. Want a piece of paper? Uh huh. Okay, here. See you, Vince. Uh huh. <laughs> Hi, Vince. Huh. Lyndon's gone, eh? Uh huh. Oh, is this for me? Uh huh. God sure did a neat thing when he made you, Dirk. Love, Vince. Well, that's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Oh. Uh... Thanks, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> the next
explain this? What you look at, Toby? Oh, nothing much. Uh, but when we see your hair is making down a kaleidoscope. Sure. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Guys, let's go. Let's watch. Come on, guys. <laughs> have a party, but party hats could add a lot of fun. I'm at Harbor Fun and this is Kaleidoscope. This is Sue. Hi Sue. Hi Harriet. How are you? How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Okay, let's get started. What you need is a large sheet of paper. And on it we've drawn a line straight across, or oh, a couple of inches up, and a circle. These are some of the examples of the hats that we've made already. Using the long band to go around your head and any kind of design in the middle. It doesn't really have to be a circle, it could be a square or whatever. This is uh, a piece out of wallpaper. And it goes on your head like that. And you tape it around the back. There's another one here that we've made using foil plates. And that goes around your head like that. And you take it at the back. Now, Harriet, you and I are going to make one, OK? OK. We're going to use egg carton little cups. And we're going to cut them in sections all the way around to make a flower petal. Open it out and then paint them. So I'll cut them. How about you paint them? Make one one color and one the other color. Now you can paint them any color you want. Also use other things like um, aluminum foil all the way across to make a crown just by cutting cardboard. You can use old crayons, make, use blue on noodles and paint them. Okay, so once we've got these all done, we're going to glue them on in the circle. There we are. Good. Just put a dab of glue on the bottom. That's it. Come in. It out. So you cut straight across to the line, across to this line, and then around the circle. almost anything that you can find in the home and then tape it on at the back and there's your party hat if you would like the instructions for today's craft write to us the address will be coming up soon so don't miss it and have fun with your party hats bye for now bye Once there lived the father who owned some very precious gems. For many years, he left them locked away in a safety deposit box in the bank. 
waiting for the day when it would be the right time to bring them home. The father told his son many wonderful stories about the precious gems. Each jewel was very special to the old man for different reasons. At last, the long-awaited day arrived. Now the time has come for you to bring my precious gems home to me. Here is the key to the safety deposit box. Go to the bank and say to the teller, Today, my father wishes to have his gems released. And so the faithful son obeyed. He hurried along on his way to the city, excited to see the gems he had heard so much about. The gems that would one day be his very own. Open up the safety deposit box, please. Here's the key. Today my father wishes to have his gems released. You're quite a young boy to be given such a great responsibility. I only do as my father tells me. Then she took the key and in a few moments returned with the precious gems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is all of them. Thank you, then. And he gathered them all and put them in the bag. Hurriedly, he left the bank and pressed his way through the crowd, anxious to get back home to show his father. But in all the excitement, one of the gems accidentally fell out of the bag, unnoticed, and rolled into a crack in the sidewalk. Father, I'm home. Come quickly and see the precious gems. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Didn't you receive ten? Oh, no. One has been lost. And immediately, the father and son set out to find the lost gem. They looked everywhere, retracing all the steps the boy had taken. What are you looking for? A lost gem. I'll help you look. Come on, everyone. Come help us find the lost gem. People from everywhere joined in the search for the lost jewel. Late into the night, the search party went on until... Father, Father, I found it. I found the lost gem. The people cheered and cried out loud for joy. Let's have a great celebration. For this gem that is so precious to me has been found and is back in my hands where it belongs. And suddenly, the city streets were alive with singing and dancing, and all the people rejoiced that the gem had been found. You are a precious gem, and your heavenly Father wants you back. If you are lost and trying to hide from God, you need to repent from your sin and come home to your rightful place in His hands. He's looking for you, so come. It will make everyone very happy. Hey everybody, there's something I have to tell you. These are the cuties with the natural curls. I'm sorry for acting like I was better than you guys. It's alright. It's okay, Toby. Nobody's better, only special. I'm an original myself. <laughs> hey, let's sing that song. It's called Original You.
Sickle Square. I think your show is very exciting. I am very glad that you have the show. I watch it every day, Sunday. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Cool. That's really good. Cool. Well, I have another letter from Lynette. My, she says, my sister Sandy and I watch your show every morning. You are helping me learn the Bible in those little skits that you do. Can you make the program longer? <laughs> Here's a letter from her mother. Dear Circle Square Gang, our family are all fans of yours and we never miss a show. What we enjoy best of all is how you help us look at difficult everyday problems and how to cope with them. You make it so easy to understand, and yet even I, the mom of, a fa of the family, enjoy watching and learning. Beth Hodgson. somebody that makes you feel jealous remember to say this god sure did a neat thing when he made you <laughs>